What's the word, y'all? Here are two teams that I think might have been left behind by their competition. Before I even talk about those two teams, I do want to say last year around the same time, I dropped the video where I was saying that I think the Golden State Warriors are going to be good, but I don't think they was going to be good enough to win a championship. Obviously, I was completely wrong. And that's what the offseason is all about. Making predictions behind logic, of course, and inevitably, be it wrong and then talking about those wrong predictions a year later when people laugh at it because yeah some people legitimately had that video saved and tweeted at me like minutes after the warriors were raising the larry o'brien which is like extreme level pettiness but i understand it if you believe in your team from the very beginning this one random dude with a microphone said hey they not gonna be good enough clip it and send it to him a year later and these two teams might be able to do that because well at least one of these two teams I still believe could be title contenders, but but actually let's start over. The first team is the Chicago Bulls. Now this is not the team that I said could be title contenders because I think even everybody in Bulls Nation understands that the Bulls are not a title contending team. They're not structurally built to win 16 games come playoff time, especially when you consider how stacked the Eastern Conference is. I do want to say that last year was the most fun I've had as a Bulls fan since 2011 when Derrick Rose was taking over the league and winning MVP. So I do want to say shout out to them for doing that, but now it's like we got to the point we made the playoffs that was cool but now we're looking at it like okay what else can we do because we are the Chicago Bulls and at one point in time we were like this staple of NBA success and since then we ain't really had a lot of that now a lot of that is due to the fact that LeBron James in the Eastern Conference for 14 years or whatever it was but nowadays the team has bought into this core but I'm looking around the league and I'm like, this roster, this roster, I'm taking that roster against the Bulls. This roster, this roster, I'm taking that roster against the Bulls. And it has me looking at my predictions for this NBA stands be like, man, are we gonna make the play in this year? Now there are a lot of things that scare me about this upcoming season. There's a lot of things to be optimistic about for sure, but let me let me go down to things that scare me quite a bit. The first one is Elonzo Ball's situation. Now if you didn't know, Lonzo Ball got injured around January of this last season, and they were like, it's about to be a three week injury. And I think Bulls fans were, pretty okay with that because we're gonna go into the all-star break and after the all-star break Zoe is gonna be back we're gonna keep this momentum because we didn't know around the all-star break the Bulls are like the one seed or two seed like we were really riding high even though I think majority of us understood that anyway um he got injured we like okay he'll be back and obviously he never came back and just a few weeks ago it's reported that we don't believe or they don't believe that he will be back for the start of this upcoming season which is extremely extremely scary now i know some people that know some people and some of those people said that that report is somewhat capped so there is room for lonzo ball to come back for the beginning of the season but i'm going to take the report at face value and say he's not and that is extremely scary for this current team and the future of this team because we watched the bulls last season specifically in the first half alonzo was there the defense was insane and that was one of the main things that people were questioning when they looked at the Chicago Bulls roster Lonzo Ball, Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Patrick Williams, Vucevic at least three out of those players probably even four are negative defenders because because Patrick Williams is young that's all I'm saying how is this team gonna defend and the answer was damn good when Lonzo was out there that man was a man amongst boys on the defensive side of the ball. He was everywhere. He was a menace. And don't get me started when Alex Caruso was on the court with him. Nobody was scoring. They were locking your favorite players up and then he got injured and I slowly saw this team that was like ranked top 10 in defense go down and down and down. And it got to the point where the last month and a half of the season, I mean, the Bulls were like so far in the tank. They were like 25th in defense at that point. And, and it's not all about Lonzo Ball's injury, but it's a huge part of it. So if Zoe's not coming back anytime soon, what does that leave us? Now, I think the most optimistic of Bulls fans will listen to this Lonzo Ball part and be like, don't worry, Kenny. We got depth at that position, that defense. Alex Caruso was great. I wouldn't have voted him all defensive team, but he he disrupted so many plays, so many individual plays where he's like locking up legitimately for 20 something seconds and causing a turnover or causing a miss shot. And then we also had the rookie, Ayo Sumo, out of nowhere, Chicago's very own, stepped in on the NBA court and decided to clamp up. Those are great positives, but they don't outweigh the negative that is the Lonzo Ball being out. We got to talk about DeMar DeRozan, man. Oh, man. What an amazing season it was to watch. Every single game in this year, I was amazed by DeMar DeRozan. First half of the season, bro was basically averaging 28 points per game. Last year in San Antonio, he was at 21. Not even really sniffing an all-star appearance. This year, all-star game starter, all-NBA for the first time in some years. It was amazing. Bro hit a game winner on the last day of the calendar year in 2021, and then the very next night, January 1st, 2022, hit another game winner. Something that you're going to be hearing about on NBA Jeopardy 40 years from now. The answer is DeMar DeRozan, don't forget. And then we get to the second half of the season where it not died down, that's a stretch, but it definitely slowly dipped a little bit. 
And for DeMar DeRozan, he dipped from an all-NBA player to an all-star player. It ain't like he turned into a bum because he was very, very far away from that. But we probably got the more realistic version of DeMar DeRozan. Now, I'm not going to be one to underestimate DeMar because it seems like Bleach Report is doing that every single year for us. But I'm just saying, what he did last season seems like it, it's going to be hard to replicate. And I think the way this team is built right now, they kind of need him to replicate that plus another jump form from uh, Zach Levine for us to really be in the core of where we want to be. I mean, you gave up Wendell Carter, first round pick to Yavusevich. You gave up a first round pick to the Spurs to get DeMar DeRozan. We put a lot of eggs in this core. And, and I ain't even talking about Vucevic's down season. That scares me too. I'm Googling the NBA standings from this last season. And I'm going to read you the teams that were below the Chicago Bulls. And we're going to really determine if these teams got better what we should be scared for the Chicago Bulls. The Brooklyn Nets. There's so much going on in Brooklyn. But I will say on paper, they look better. Especially if we're going to get Kyrie Irving for a full season and whatever's left of Ben Simmons. The Atlanta Hawks traded for DeJounte Murray. The Cleveland Cavaliers traded for Donovan Mitchell and didn't lose any core pieces. And then we got like the Charlotte Hornets. I'm not really worried about Charlotte. But like the Knicks got better. The Wizards got better. And then you got those younger teams like Detroit and Orlando. I don't think we have to worry about them too much this upcoming season. But there are a few teams that were beneath the Bulls this season that undoubtedly got better while the Chicago Bulls kind of improved the depth a little bit. Andre Drummond's on the team. He's one of the better backup centers in all of basketball. And I think the front office might have known the Lonzo Ball news and they got the, dra the Dragon to come in. That's, that's cool. But those other teams got all star upgrades. And we did it. But here's, here's the room for optimism, Bulls fans, because obviously I'm still rocking. You will never catch a time where I'm not rocking with the Chicago Bulls. It is ingrained in my blood. It's tattooed on my leg. The optimism comes from Zach Levine potentially being completely healthy this season. Anybody that had that been keeping up with the Bulls last year knew that he was dealing with some hand injuries, he was dealing with some knee injuries, and all of that stuff got fixed up this offseason. So like, we could see another explosion, which is something I think that we would need in order for us to, to continue to be at this level or even higher. Vucevic has such a down year that I could see both sides of the coin where people are like, man, Vucevic is just trash now. We just got to wait for this contract to end and then it's over with. But I can also see the optimistic Bulls fan and be like, hey, this last season for him was bad and he will not be worse than that. I, I don't know really which one it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be optimistic on this one. We're not going to get the all-star version of Vooch again, probably. But he's going to be better than what he did last year. And then we have the young guys. Ayo Dosumo. We got the young guys. Patrick Williams, who looked good in these off-season runs. But something that scares me a little bit about the Chicago Bulls' uh, uh, young core is, like, because we have Vucevic, Zach Levine, and DeMar DeRose, these are three people that, in their mind, are all-star caliber players and want all-star caliber shots. We might not be able to see the blossom that might be Patrick Williams because he'll always, at the, the, the top of it, be fourth in the pecking order. Always. Unless this year he just blossomed so crazily that we like, oh, snap, we're going to take four shots away from DeMar. We're going to take two shots away from Voot. No, let's let's take six shots away from Voot and two away from DeMar. It's, it's unrealistic, I think, to see... Uh, him take that type of jump. So he might be pigeonholed to be the fourth best player on the team and the fourth, fourth, fourth most impactful offensive player. Anyway, uh, we'll see, Bulls fans. I'm riding the dime with y'all. You feel me? We're going to be there open the night, hopefully, and we'll be there in the playoffs once if we make it. Now, this second team is on a whole different level, right? The, the Chicago Bulls one is like, man, are we making the playoffs? This team undoubtedly is making the playoffs. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But this team doesn't have playoff aspirations. This is a team that is trying to compete every single season. It's the Miami Heat. Hear me out, y'all. Again, there's logic behind this, even if you disagree. Kind of similar to the Bulls in the sense that I look at the teams that are around them and be like, did this team get better? Yeah, they did. Did this team get better? Yeah, they did. Did this team get better? Yeah, they did. Did we get better? I think that us getting better is some people outperforming. I get memed a lot for saying the sentence, but it's a fact. I was listening to Zach Lowe's podcast with Chris Herring earlier today, and he asked a question. He was talking about the Phoenix Suns, but he asked a question I think can be applied to a lot of different teams that were contenders but didn't win a championship. Is the improvement from your roster coming from the outside or the inside, right? Is this something that we got to trade for somebody for, or do we believe somebody on our roster is going to help us fix the holes that were, that were there for last season? But it's just still something missing about this roster when I look at it. Now, to every argument, there's a counter argument, because I know there's some Heat fans out there typing, right now, Kenny, if Jimmy Butler hit that shot, what are we talking about? We're in the finals, and we don't make this video. If Kyle Lowry don't get injured, then subsequently gets out of shape, what are we talking about? If, if 
Tyler Hero doesn't get injured and only play six minutes in game seven. What are we talking about? And all of those are very good counterpoints. But I still look at this team and look at what I saw in the, in the, in the conference finals last year and be like, something is missing. But this is a whole new season, y'all. And again, I'm looking at the teams around them. The Boston Celtics got better this season with this offseason. I mean, on paper. Of course, everything that we're talking about is on paper, right? Even with the Bulls segments, on paper. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon comes in, he helps the team. Gallinari was going to help the team get well soon. But that team, the team that beat you in seven, got better. The Milwaukee Bucks didn't get better per se, but they did get healthy. That's the idea, is that their, their off-season improvements is like Chris Middleton will be healthy. At least that's what we're guessing once we come playoff time. But even that, I think that if Chris Middleton is healthy last season, they probably win the Eastern Conference. And then the Philadelphia 76ers, who are also on this tier one when it comes to Eastern Conference, got better. You lost P.J. Tucker to them. That's a team you're going to have to go through again, more than likely. Now, Anthony Melton might not have a great track record when it comes to playoff times. Like, legitimately, his numbers are staggeringly bad. But it's still an upgrade of some of the stuff that they were trying to play in the playoffs last year. So, like, the teams that are around you, this top-tier Eastern Conference teams, all got better. And what do we do as the Miami Heat? Brought back Victor Oladipo. And if Victor Oladipo could be as good as he think he could be, then all of this don't even matter. Because he answers so many questions. But realistically, it... Probably it's not the case. The answer is, is Kyle Lowry gets back in shape and he looked good in the picture that I saw this offseason, but he's still like 38 years old or something like that. It's Tyler Hero trying to improve his game, well round his game. It's Bam Adebayo realized that, hey, in that game seven, I was kind of doing my thing. I need to do that in game one through six too. But can we get all of those things to work together for us to legitimately win a championship this year? And I, I think it's hard to say yes to that. And Jimmy Butler got dreads now. I don't know, bro. It's, some, it's something about it. I, it's, it's some, something's off about it. Shout out to Jimmy, but like, something's off about it. I ain't dreaded up. I, I ain't locked my hair. But this is years of growth, Jimmy. I've been working on this for years. You just come in and get a hairstyle and your, your hair lower than mine. Oh, no, man. No, man. You got to really put that work in. And I look at that starting lineup and it's like there's, there's missing something at like the four position. Right, it's, and, and people are speculating it's gonna be Kay Lamar. And I'm making this video now. Watch Kay Lamar wins most improved player or something. And you know, the Miami Heat did it again. But uh, they're, they're definitely lacking in that spot. I read somewhere that um, Hayward Highsmith is going to get some run at the four. Don't know much about him because he played spot minutes last season. But again, I think that when I compare their roster to the other three rosters of the top tier Eastern Conference team, there's a lot to be desired. Luckily for them, they have Jimmy Butler. Boy, he's a goddamn dog, especially come playoff time. He's a goddamn dog. Forget about the, the Bucks series from a couple seasons ago. Other than that, he's been a dog in the playoffs. Stupidly locked in. I understand it, Jimmy. I understand. I've been stupidly locked in before and then lost a, a Valorant match 13 to 6. Like, that was me too, Jimmy. Either way, um, hopefully this is the, the anti-jinx so both of those teams be successful because one of those teams is mine. You feel me?